Hey guys, this is the new 1200 watt e-bike kit with waterproof connectors from ebikeling.com. Inside the box comes with the rim and motor, which is compatible with rim or disc brakes, and features a compact 9 pin waterproof connector, a 48 volt 30 amp speed controller with again waterproof connectors, and a XT60 connector for the battery connection, a S830 LCD display, which is similar to the SW900 but a portrait orientation. A motor wire extension cable, which is 90 centimeters long. A extension cable for the brake switches, LCD display, and throttle. This cable is 185 centimeters long. A generic 7-speed freewheel. Spare rim liner. A pair of hard rubber grips. A right-hand thumb throttle. A torque arm kit with 5 millimeter thick axle plate. And finally, some zip ties and wire loom. Today I'm going to show you how to install this kit onto this bike. It is a Northrock CTM Hybrid sold by Costco, which I bought used off Craigslist for 150 Canadian. I chose this bike because it has disc brakes, front suspension, and a 7-speed rear derailleur, which will match the 7-speed freewheel included in this kit. The tools needed for this conversion is an Allen key set, a socket set with torque spits if you have disc brakes, an adjustable wrench, a crank removal tool, tire levers, and a bike pump. You would also need a battery. This kit works with a 48 or 52 volt battery, and I have confirmed it with eBike Link that a 52 volt battery is compatible. I feel the most expensive part to any eBike conversion should be the battery. Therefore, I went with a 52 volt 15 amp hour battery from em3ev.com. And remember to get a charger because they don't include one. First thing to do is remove the old wheel and swap over the tire and tube onto the new wheel. Then if you have disc brakes, you'll need to swap over the disc. This is where the torque spits are needed. Now install the freewheel. You don't need to use this chain tool I have. You can just hold the rear brake and stomp on the pedals when everything's installed. Next, slip the wheel onto the frame with the round washers on the inside of the frame. Install and tighten the washer and nut on the gear side. Next, I install the torque arm. Next, I remove the left crank and install the pedal assist sensor. My bottom bracket doesn't allow for the sensor to bolt on easily, so I had to cut the sensor and mount it using a hose clamp and then bend it into position.
Now I work on the handlebar items, starting with the LCD display and control switch. Next is the brake levers. The problem I have is my levers and shifters are one piece, so I won't be able to use the included brake levers. I decided to take apart the levers and reuse the switch and wiring. Using welder's glue to secure the switch to the underside of the brake lever, I also glued a piece of plastic I found from IKEA for the switch to press against. Next is to install the thumb throttle. The kit can be used without the throttle, which is useful for some places can have your bike confiscated for having one. Now I go ahead and connect the front connectors to the extension cable and the motor to the motor extension cable. Next up is the controller. Normally you'd mount the controller inside the front triangle, but I wanted to put in a bag like this, which would allow me to hide all the excess wiring and strap it to the down tube. This would give me the option to run a large triangle battery in the future. Now I'm installing the battery mount base to the existing bottom mount holes. A little cable management is needed. Then lock in the battery, turn it on, and check to see if it works. The last thing to do is go out for a ride. Everything turned out great and uh, top speed is about 50 kilometers an hour. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.